What is it now? Haven't Grey Wardens asked more than enough of the Circle? I simply came to deliver a message from the revered mother, Sir Mage. She desires your presence. What her reverence desires is of no concern to me. I am busy helping the Grey Wardens by the King's orders, I might add. Should I have asked her to write a note? Tell her I will not be harassed in this manner. Yes, I was harassing you by delivering a message. Your glibness does you no credit. Here I thought we were getting along so well. I was even going to name one of my children after you. The Grumpy One. Enough. I will speak to the woman if I must. Get out of my way, fool. You know, one good thing about the Blight is how it brings people together. You're not the first to tell me that. Wait, we haven't met, have we? I don't suppose you happen to be another mage. Less being yelled at for me, then. So the day is still young. Wait, I do know who you are. You're Duncan's new recruit, from Orzammar. I should have recognized you right away. I apologize. Duncan sent word. He spoke quite highly of you. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Alistair, the new Grey Warden. Though I guess you knew that. As the junior member of the Order, I'll be accompanying you when you prepare for the joining. Right, that was the name. Hmm. There haven't been any Dwarven Grey Wardens in some time. You must know a lot about Darkspawn. Oh, I uh, guess you've got a more colorful background than Duncan let on. But don't worry, you'll see plenty of Darkspawn now. And probably sooner than you'd like. Anyhow, whenever you're ready, let's get back to Duncan. I imagine he's eager to get things started. With the mage. The Circle is here at the King's request, and the Chantry doesn't like that one bit. They just love letting mages know how unwelcome they are, which puts me in a bit of an awkward position. I was once a Templar. Not that that's all Templars do, but yes, the Chantry raised me until Duncan recruited me six months ago. I'm sure the revered mother meant it as an insult, sending me as her messenger, and the mage picked right up on that. I never would have agreed to deliver it, but Duncan says we're all to cooperate and get along. Apparently they didn't get the same speech. Dabith and Sir Jory are here in the camp. Have you met them? Keep an eye out. Maybe we'll see one of them. Don't worry. I'll try not to embarrass you. You do? Huh. That's a switch. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, lead on. Yes? What about? So I imagine. What would you like to know? The Grey Wardens are warriors without equal. Darkspawn threatened to destroy the world four times over. Each time, the Grey Wardens led mankind to victory. Nobody knows more about Darkspawn, and nobody's better equipped to deal with them. You'll see. Trust me. I don't know if I'd go that far. Duncan says the Grey Wardens do whatever is necessary to protect mankind from Darkspawn. That means some pretty extreme things. Whatever it takes to bring victory. Well, let's see. Surely you've heard of Weisselpt Fortress? The Great Airy carved into the White Cliffs far off in the Anderfels? That's where the Grey Wardens once kept the Griffins. The Griffins died out, however, and our numbers have dwindled since the last blight. There's only a handful left in Ferelden. A few more in other nations. The others are camped with the King's soldiers in the valley. The King's given us a position of honor at the vanguard, despite our small numbers. I think Kaelin is actually excited to ride into battle with us. Maybe he thinks that's what his father would have done. King Marek, Kaelin's father, reaffirmed the power the Grey Wardens were given during the Blights. 
In practice, we can't conscript too often without hurting our cause. We were exiled from Ferelden once. Best not to let that happen again. You want to ask me about something else? Of course. You want the Chantry's version or the truth? <laughs> they seldom are. According to the Chant of Light, the Maker imprisoned the old gods underground long ago as punishment for tricking mankind into worshipping them. The old gods still whispered to some men and taught them magic. These men became the Magisters of the Tevinter Empire. The Magisters used their gift to enter the Golden City, tainting it and themselves. They were cast out by the Maker and became the first Darkspawn. They fled underground, bringing their taint to their gods. The tainted old gods were the archdemons who rose from their prisons and led the Darkspawn against the world. The truth is, we don't really know. They come up from the ground, and that's as far as we've gotten. Yes, and it nearly wiped us out. When defeated, the Darkspawn flee back underground and seek out another old god to taint, thus bringing another blight. We haven't seen it yet. People are beginning to think this is just an unusually large Darkspawn raid without an Archdemon to unify them. But seriously, the Archdemon could be in the wilds or underground. It could be hiding. Just because it hasn't shown itself doesn't mean it isn't out there. You're a dwarf. You tell me. Your people have been trying that for just about ever, haven't they? They've controlled the deep roads ever since they defeated the Dwarven Kingdoms. Even if we invaded, we can only chase them so far. The old gods were dragons. So the stories say. Big ones. Intelligent, even. The Tevinta Empire had big statues of them. Each dragon had a name and a place in the cosmos. It's all very intricate. The Archdemons may not be the old gods, but they're definitely dragons. The Grey Wardens killed so many Darkspawn by the end of the Last Blight. People decided they were gone for good. Of course. We chop off the snake's head. It's the only way. According to texts, the most famous Grey Warden leader, Garahel, killed the Archdemon Underal in personal combat at the Battle of Aesli to end the Last Blight. Without the Archdemon to command them, the Darkspawn flee back underground. The Grey Wardens keep watch. We feel the Darkspawn when they come. You'll understand after the joining, if you... Well, you'll understand. Not to mention people start to notice when Darkspawn pour out of the wilds and taint everything around them. Just a guess. Thousands? Tens of thousands? They've had centuries to build up their numbers. You want to ask me about something else? Duncan is the leader of the Grey Wardens in Ferelden. Which he would say doesn't mean much, as there aren't many of us here. Yet, beyond that... He's a good man, a good judge of character. I owe him a lot. What about you? What do you think of him? That sounds familiar. He's done the best he can with what little he has. And that includes me, I guess. You want to ask me about something else? I wish I could tell you more. Maybe ask me again after Duncan speaks to you about it. You want to ask me about something else? The one tomorrow. I'll tell you. It's Tan Loghain we should be looking to win it, not the king. Kaelin just wants his place in history. But Tan is planning the strategy. Uh, that's my opinion, anyway. I guess I should be thankful the king favors us Grey Wardens. But I know who's keeping the lid on the pot. You know, that's a good question. 
The other Grey Wardens are riding into battle with the King. I don't know if you'll be with them. We're at the edge of the Korkari Wilds, the eye of the Blight Storm, right where the Horde will be coming. Ostagar itself is an excellent defensive position. The Wilders were pushed back from here time and again in ancient days. I'm sure Tern Loghain has the battle planned to the last detail. Still, no Blight has ever been defeated with so little cost. If we don't break the Horde here, Duncan says it will spread until it engulfs all of Ferelden. Then it will take an alliance of nations to fight it. Which would be bad. Neither the King nor the Tern really seems to believe this is a real Blight, however. You want to ask me about something else? Then let's get a move on, shall we? It is finished. Welcome. Two more deaths. In my joining, only one of us died, but it was... horrible. I'm glad at least one of you made it through. How do you feel? Such is what it takes to be a Grey Warden. Did you have dreams? I had terrible dreams after my joining. Such dreams come when you begin to sense the Darkspawn, as we all do. That and many other things can be explained in the months to come. Before I forget, there is one last part to your joining. We take some of that blood and put it in a pendant. Something to remind us of those who didn't make it this far. Take some time. When you're ready, I'd like you to accompany me to a meeting with the King. The meeting is to the west, down the stairs. Please attend as soon as you're able. You heard the plan. You and Alistair will go to the Tower of Ishal and ensure the beacon is lit. What? I won't be in the battle. This is by the King's personal request, Alistair. If the beacon is not lit, Terran Loghain's men won't know when to charge. So he needs two Grey Wardens standing up there holding the torch, just in case, right? The tower is on the other side of the gorge from the King's camp, the way we came when we arrived. You'll need to cross the gorge and head through the gate and up to the tower entrance. From the top, you'll overlook the entire valley. We will signal you when the time is right. Alistair will know what to look for. Stay with the Terran's men and guard the tower. If you are needed, we will send word. We soil our drawers, that's what. If it does, leave it to us. I want no heroics from either of you. The battle is about to begin. Once I leave, move quickly. You'll have less than an hour. Of course, even the best laid plans go awry. So do what you must. I trust you both. Just not enough to actually fight with the rest of you. <laughs> there will be plenty of battles, Alistair. Be patient. Then I must join the others. From here, you two are on your own. Remember, you are both Grey Wardens. I expect you to be worthy of that title. Duncan. May the Maker watch over you. May he watch over us all. Maker's breath. What are these Darkspawn doing ahead of the rest of the Horde? There wasn't supposed to be any resistance here. Right, because clearly this is all just a misunderstanding. We'll laugh about this later. At any rate, we need to hurry. We need to get up to the top of the tower and light the signal fire in time. Taren Loghain will be waiting for the signal. Well, there it is. Lothering. Pretty as a painting. Ah, so you have finally decided to rejoin us, have you? Falling on your blade in grief seemed like too much trouble, I take it. Is my being upset so hard to understand? Have you never lost someone important to you? Just what would you do if your mother died? Before or after I stopped laughing. Right, very creepy. Forget I asked. His navel, I suspect. He certainly has been contemplating it for long enough. Oh, I get it. 
This is the part where we're shocked to discover how you've never had a friend your entire life. I can be friendly when I desire to. Alas, desiring to be more intelligent does not make it so. Anyway, I thought we should talk about where we intend to go first. This should be good. I think what Flemeth suggested is the best idea. These treaties, have you looked at them? There are three main groups that we have treaties for. The Dalish Elves, the Dwarves of Orzammar, and the Circle of Magi. I also still think that Arleman is our best bet for help. We might even want to go to him first. Short of leaving for Elden to seek them out, the only place to send word to would be Weisalpt Fortress. And that's thousands of miles away. Well, I don't know where we should go. I'll do whatever you decide. Now that is unsurprising. Arleman is a good man, but I don't know for sure he's where we should go. I'm not going to fight about it. Go after your enemy directly. Find this man Loghain and kill him. The rest of this business with the treaties can then be done in safety. Yes, he certainly wouldn't see that coming, and it's not like he has the advantage of an army and experience and... I was asked for my opinion and I gave it. If your wish is to come up with reasons why something cannot be done, we will stand here until the Darkspawn are upon us. I can give you directions, if you like. If he isn't out in the field with his army, he's probably going to be at the palace in Denerim. We can go to Denerim, but somehow I suspect that they're not going to let us just walk around. Only a suspicion, of course. That will be at their tower on Lake Kalenhard to the north. We'll be looking for the first enchanter, whoever that is. He'll be at the castle Redcliffe, in the far western part of Ferelden, next to the mountain passes. If he isn't there, someone will be able to tell us where he is. If we head eastward, towards the Brazilian forest, we should hear word of one of the clans that wanders that area. Hopefully, they will still be there. You're going to have to. I certainly wouldn't want to go there alone. Why? Would it frighten you? Are you afraid of dark and sunken places, hmm? I mean we won't have any choice. You'll be there under Grey Warden business, and the dwarves will just have to see reason. They certainly are renowned for an abundance of reason, tis true. You don't know where Orzammar is? She doesn't know how to find it on the surface, fool. She has never been here before. If you follow the west road around Cullenhard Lake into the mountains through Gurland's Pass, from there I expect you'd know the way. Then you have a plan. Fair enough. Let's head into the village whenever you're ready. Bad dreams, huh? Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. What do you need? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it. Not when so much is riding on us. Not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. I... 
I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. I suppose he did. It probably sounds stupid, but part of me wishes I was with him, in the battle. I feel like I abandoned him. Of course, I'd be dead then, wouldn't I? It's not like that would make him happier. I think he came from High Ever, or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime, see about putting up something in his honor. I don't know. Dwarves don't practice cremation, do they? How do your people honor your dead? I heard about that, now that I think about it. Their spirits return to the rock, strengthening the foundation of the Taig. It sounds so strange. I suppose you're right. Thank you. Really. I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. What do you need? Ask away. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Perhaps, but there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. What do you need? Ask away. I suppose I could. But I really would rather not. When the Grand Cleric let Duncan recruit me, she made me swear never to reveal Templar secrets outside of the Chantry. I'd rather not go back on my word. Ask me later, perhaps. Maybe I'll change my mind. This is not something small you're asking, after all. What do you need? Ask away. Such as they are. That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlay, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden, and even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the Blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we'd better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. Just left? 
You mean just left for Elden? I don't know. If there's an Archdemon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can defeat it. And that means the Blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlay and other lands would hear about it and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? Ask away. Such as they are. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? Ask away. Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. You're telling me I was banished to the kitchens to scour the pots more times than I can count. And that's a lot. I, I can count pretty high. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. I don't know. Maybe. When he came looking for recruits, I just remember praying fervently to the Maker that he would pick me. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. He was. A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. What do you need? Ask away. Did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Well, it wasn't until I was eight that I discovered you didn't have to lick yourself clean. Old habits die hard, you know. And my table manners, too. Though, come to think of it, they weren't all that different from the other Templars. Or did I dream all of that? Funny the dreams you'll have when you sleep on the cold, hard ground, isn't it? <laughs> Are you having strange dreams? I, uh, oh, I, I think I completely lost my chain of thought. Oh, there it is. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard, and before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle, who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow, and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. Our Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the King, because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence, I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. And raised my dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. 
All I know is that the Arl is a good man, and well-loved by the people. He also was King Kaelin's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Ask away. Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable, and you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. On confession day, we could go all night. Being a Templar isn't all about chasing men in skirts and hiding behind priests, you know. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right, if you insist. It's not like we have anything better to do, right? The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. The education, mostly, but also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? But it's not your home anymore, right? You can never go back for good. I think I understand how you feel. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good either way. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. Something on your mind? Of course. Others, yes, but not yourself. I need someone who's trained first as a warrior. It's as much about discipline as anything. I guess if I'm going to give up Chantry secrets, I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp, and I'll see what I can do. Something on your mind? Of course. You mean other than becoming a Grey Warden? Hmm. You know, I asked Duncan this too, and all I got was, you'll see... Oh, it's not that Duncan wants to keep it a secret, it's just that the Grey Wardens don't discuss it much. I gather it's not a pleasant topic. The first change I noticed was an increase in appetite. I used to get up in the middle of the night and raid the castle larder. I thought I was starving. I'd slurp down every dinner like it was my last, and <laughs> my face all covered in gravy. When I'd look up, the other Grey Wardens would stare, then laugh themselves to tears. That's me, Alistair the Pig. I can go through a trough in five seconds flat, just you watch. Oh, and then there were the nightmares. Duncan said it was part of how we sense the Darkspawn. We tap into their, well, I don't know what you call it, their group mind. And when we sleep, it's even worse. You learn to block it out after a while, but at first it's hard. It's supposed to be worse for those who join during a blight. How is it for you? Some people never have much trouble, but that's rare. Others have trouble sleeping their entire life. They're just more sensitive, I suppose. Everyone ends up the same, though. Once you reach a certain age, the real nightmares come. 
That's how a Grey Warden knows his time has come. Oh, that's right. We never had time to tell you that part, did we? Well, in addition to all the other wonderful things about being a Grey Warden, you don't need to worry about dying from old age. You've got 30 years to live. Give or take. The taint. It's a death sentence. Ultimately, your body won't be able to take it. When the time comes, most Grey Wardens go to Orzammar and die in battle rather than waiting. It's tradition. We are all going to die. When Duncan told me, I was angry. He put his hand on my shoulder and said this. It's not how you die that's important. It's how you live. And you wondered why we kept the joining a secret from the new recruits. And there you have it. You know, Duncan... He started having the nightmares again. He told me that in private. He said it wouldn't be long before he'd go to Orzammar himself. I guess he got what he wanted. I just wish it had been something worthy of him. I know. Ending the Blight should make this all worthwhile, right? Something on your mind? Not unless they were asking me for a favor. Well, there was that one time in Denerim, but those women were... <laughs> not like you. Why? Is this your way of telling me you think I'm handsome? Maybe. It doesn't hurt to have a pretty girl say that, though. Beats being run through with a sword any day. So, is this the part where I get to say the same? Oh, well, <laughs> I'll think about it then. Sometime soon, I'm sure. At your service. Of course. Such as they are. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. At your service. Of course. I didn't know them for very long. But I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family, since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you'd think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. There was one Grey Warden who came all the way from the Anderfels. What was his name? Was Gregor... Gregor... He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. And the man could drink, he drank all the time, but he never got drunk. Finally, we all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. Sometimes, we were kin of a sort. All of us had gone through the joining, so we knew... Well, anyhow, it doesn't have to be deadly serious all the time. Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint for every half pint that the rest of us drank. He was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... until... Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but... It just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by. Nothing at all. There's no body, not even a token of his that I could take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. I just would have liked something of his to take with me, that's all. Well, there's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. Let's just go. I'm wondering something. I'd like to know your thoughts about some of our traveling companions. Do you mind if I ask? How about Ogren? You must have an opinion on the smell, at the very least. Yeah, that's what I thought you'd say. For a drunk, he's an excellent warrior, right? How he lifts his sword is a bit of a mystery. 
though I suppose the point is that he does lift it. And so long as we can point him in the right direction, he charges too. He has gusto, I'll give him that. Zevran, the elf. You can't trust him, can you? Do you believe his so-called vow? Really? Why? That's a lot of trust to put in someone who tried to kill you. Hmm. Well, if you are, then maybe I should too. But that doesn't mean I won't keep an eye on him. He's just too shifty. What about Sten? The way he looks at me with those eyes. Creepy. And he's so quiet for someone so big. The more I talk to him, the more reasonable he does seem. His philosophy is so strange. But it doesn't sound at all as vile as the Chantry describes it. And yet, he killed all those people. He doesn't even deny it. Doesn't that bother you? Yet he seems otherwise honorable and even wise. I don't get it. What about Liliana? Is she crazy? Or do you really believe in her vision? That's one way to put it. I don't know what to make of her. If you look at her when she doesn't see you, she just looks so... so sad. I almost feel guilty taking her away from her life. True enough. Who'd have thought a sister would prove to be an adept thief and spy, eh? Morrigan. Do you trust her? Think about it. Maybe Flemeth sent her with us for some other reason than she said. And you're just going to let her follow us around? A Malefica and make her knows what else? That's the most sensible thing I've heard out of you yet. Just remember that she's dangerous too, and evil, and mean. Enough. I think my curiosity is sated. Let's get back to it, shall we? Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. I told you before how Al Eamon raised me, right? That my mother was a serving girl at the castle and he took me in? The reason he did that was because... Well, because my father was King Marek. Which made Kaelin my... Half-brother, I suppose. Maker's breath, I hope not. I don't think so. You don't think so, do you? I'm a bastard. And, and nobody even knows about me. I, I would have told you, but... It never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it anyhow. At any rate, that's it. That's what I had to tell you. I thought you should know about it. Because it will probably come up. I didn't want to walk into Redcliffe without you knowing the truth. That would be just awkward. I have no illusions about my status, however. It's always been made very clear that I'm a commoner, and now a Grey Warden, and in no way in line for the throne. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Arl Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Caelan's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. Though, if he's really as sick as we've heard... Oh, no, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I really don't. So there you have it. Now, can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Great Wardens. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret this. Somehow, I just know it. Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk about what happened at Redcliffe. I just wanted to thank you. 
You went out of your way to save the Arl's family, and you did it. Even though it would have been easier not to. There's been so much death and destruction. It... Well, it, it makes me feel good that at least we were able to save something. No matter how small. I owed the Arl that much. You're right. Hopefully, by that time, there's still enough of Ferelden left to save. Good. Now that the warm, fuzzy part of the day is over with, we can get back to the ritual dismemberments. Oh, wait. It's not Tuesday, is it? You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. No, I, I know that. That's not what I'm talking about. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Great Warden, I did some checking and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know anything about her except her name and where she lives. Her name is Goldana. And I think she remarried, but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then... Well, it's worth a look. That's my sister's house. I'm almost sure of it. This is... Yes, this is the right address. She could be inside. Could we go and see? Will she even know who I am? Does she even know I exist? My sister. That sounds very strange. Sister. Sister. Hmm. Oh, now I'm babbling. Maybe we should go. Let's go. Let, let's just go. Uh, hello? Hey, you have linens to wash? I charge three bits on a bundle. You won't find better. And don't trust what that Natalia woman tells you either. She's foreign and she'll rob you blind. I'm not here to have any wash done. <laughs> uh, my name's Alistair. I'm... Well, this may sound sort of strange, but... Are you called Anna? If so, I suppose I'm your brother. My what? I am Goldana, yes. How do you know my name? What kind of tomfoolery are you folk up to? Yes, I think so. I'm sure of it, in fact. Look, our mother, she worked as a servant in Redcliffe Castle a long time ago before she died. D do you know about that? She... You! I knew it! They told me you was dead. They told me the babe was dead along with mother, but I knew they was lying. They told you I was dead? Who? Who told you that? Them's at the castle. I told them the babe was the king's and they said he was dead. Gave me a coin to shut my mouth and sent me on my way. I knew it. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. The babe didn't die. I'm him. I'm your brother. Ugh, for all the good it does me. You killed mother, you did. And I've had to scrape by all this time. That coin didn't last long, and when I went back, they ran me off. And who in the Maker's name are you? Some dwarf carrying all his riches, I expect? Hey, don't speak to her that way. She's my friend and a Grey Warden, just like me. Oh, I see. A prince and a Grey Warden, too. Well, who am I to think poorly of someone so high and mighty compared to me? I don't know you, boy. Your royal father forced himself on my mother and took her away from me. And what do I got to show for it? Nothing. They tricked me good. I should have told everyone. I got five mouths to feed. And unless you can help with that, I got less than no use for you. I... I'm sorry. I don't know what to say.
Yes, it really seems that way, doesn't it? I wasn't expecting my sister to be so... I'm starting to wonder why I came. I don't know why you came either, or what you expected to find. But it isn't here. Now get out of my house, the both of you. It's her house. Let's just get out of it and leave her alone. Well, that was not what I expected, to put it lightly. This is the family I've been wondering about all my life. That shrew is my sister? I can't believe it. I... I guess I was expecting her to accept me without question. Isn't that what family is supposed to do? I... I feel like a complete idiot. Yes, I suppose you're right. I should. Let's just go. I don't want to talk about this anymore. This, this is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? Maybe he did. He might even have brought it with him one of those times he came to see me at the monastery. Not that I would have given him a chance as belligerent as I was to him. Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this if he recovers from his... When he recovers, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. Is this the part when the music starts and we begin dancing because I'm game? <laughs> Where's the minstrels? You know, I've been thinking. Back when we left Goldanas, you told me I needed to look out for myself more than I do. I'm beginning to think you were right. I need to stop letting everyone else make my decisions for me. I need to take a stand and think about myself for a change, or I'm never going to be happy. No, what you said made sense. You were right. I should be looking out for myself more. Or did I not understand you? Then from this point on, I'll be looking out for myself more. I should have done this a long time ago. I just wanted to thank you. Being with you is the one bright spot out of everything that's happened. Let's go. We've got a lot left to do. Here, look at this. Do you know what this is? I picked it in Lothering. I remember thinking, how could something so beautiful exist in a place with so much despair and ugliness? I probably should have left it alone, but I couldn't. The Darkspawn would come and their taint would just destroy it. So I've had it ever since. I thought that I might give it to you, actually. In a lot of ways, I think the same thing when I look at you. Oh, wow. She'll never see through that, I told myself. Boy, was I wrong. I'm glad you like it. I was just thinking... Here I am, doing all this complaining, and you haven't exactly been having a good time of it yourself. You've had none of the good experience of being a Grey Warden since your joining. Not a word of thanks or congratulations. It's all been death and fighting and tragedy. I thought maybe I could say something. Tell you what a rare and wonderful thing you are to find amidst all this darkness. I'm glad you like it. Now, if we could move right on past this awkward, embarrassing stage and get right to the steamy bits, I'd appreciate it. Ha 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 
bluff called. Damn, she saw right through me. I'll be... <laughs> I'll be standing over here until the blushing stops. Just to be uh, safe. You know how it is. I, I guess I really don't know how to ask you this. Oh, how do I say this? You think it would be easier, but every time I'm around you, I feel as if my head's about to explode. I, I can't think straight. Here's the thing. Being near you makes me crazy. But I can't imagine being without you. Not ever. I don't know how to say this another way. I want to spend the night with you, here, in the camp. Maybe this is too fast. I don't know, but... I know what I feel. <laughs> Especially because of that. I wanted to wait for the perfect time, the perfect place, but when will it be perfect? If things were, we wouldn't even have met. We sort of stumbled into each other. And despite this being the least perfect time, I still found myself falling for you in between all the fighting and everything else. I really don't want to wait anymore. I've... I've never done this before. You know that. I want it to be with you. While we have the chance. In case... You know, according to all the sisters at the monastery, I should have been struck by lightning by now. Yep. Lightning first, then the end of civilization as we know it. I'm a bad, bad man. You do realize the rest of our little party here is going to talk, right? They do that. Oh, sure, now you say that. By tomorrow, it'll be icy glares and awkward silences right before battle. Just you watch. So, what now? Where do we go from here? Right, I can handle that. I hope. <sighs> before we go, have I told you that I love you? I did. Well, it won't kill you to hear it again, will it? See? <laughs> Was that so hard? Something you need, my dear. Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? Wow. You don't hold back on the hard questions, huh? I don't know where this is going. We have the blight to think of first, don't we? Everything else just seems so... distant. Nor I you. Let's just deal with the blight first. There will be time for these sorts of discussions later. Trust me. Something you need, my dear? Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? Oh! <laughs> you want to... right now? Well, who am I to refuse? This is shield. It's Duncan's, isn't it? That's his crest. I did. I really did. I just never expected. Thank you. Truly, I had no idea his shield wasn't with him. This is perfect. I, I don't know how else to express my gratitude. This means a great deal to me. I can't believe you remembered it at all. 
I'll treasure this. Thank you. You're both here. Good. You're new to the Grey Wardens, and you may not have been told how an Archdemon is slain. I need to know if that is so. You mean there's more to it than just, say, chopping off its head? So it is true. Duncan had not yet told you. I had simply assumed. Tell me, have you ever wondered why the Grey Wardens are needed to defeat the Darkspawn? That is exactly what it involves. The Archdemon may be slain, as any other Darkspawn. But should any other than a Grey Warden do the slaying, it will not be enough. The essence of the beast will pass through the taint to the nearest Darkspawn and will be reborn anew in that body. The dragon is thus all but immortal. But if the Archdemon is slain by a Grey Warden, its essence travels into the Grey Warden instead. A Darkspawn is an empty, soulless vessel, but a Grey Warden is not. The essence of the Archdemon is destroyed, and so is the Grey Warden. Meaning... the Grey Warden who kills the Archdemon... dies? Yes. Without the Archdemon, the Blight ends. It is the only way. As far as we know, the transfer of the Archdemon's essence is automatic. If one of us is not present when the killing blow is made, it is all for nothing. There is no other way. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. We keep it secret for the same reason the joining is kept secret. Who would become a Grey Warden if they knew the end that might await them? And yet there must be Grey Wardens. Without us, there is no hope. It warms my heart to see such courage, but do not hurry so to sacrifice your life. If possible, the final blow should be mine to make. I am the eldest and the taint will not spare me much longer. But if I fail, the deed falls on you. The blight must be stopped now, or it will destroy all of Ferelden before the rest of the Grey Wardens can assemble. Remember that. But enough. There will be much to do tomorrow, and little enough time to rest before it. I will let you return to your rooms. I will see you once the army is ready to march, then. I guess this ends soon, one way or another. That it does, my friend. That it does. Do not be alarmed. It is only I. I decided that it was time we spoke. I have a plan, you see. A way out? The loop in your hole? I know what happens when the Archdemon dies. I know a Grey Warden must be sacrificed, and that sacrifice could be you. I have come to tell you that this does not need to be. I offer a way out. A way out for all the Grey Wardens, that there need be no sacrifice. A ritual, performed on the eve of battle, in the dark of night. Anything to do with magic stirs one's fear, especially amongst those who do not understand it. What I speak of is old magic. A ritual from a time long before the Circle of Magi was ever created. Some would call it blood magic, but I think that means little to one like you. From Flemeth, of course. I have known about it for some time. I did. Would you have believed me if I had been the one to tell you? I have my doubts. What I propose is this. Convince Alistair to lay with me, here tonight. And from this ritual, a child shall be conceived within me. The child will bear the taint, and when the Archdemon is slain, its essence will seek the child like a beacon. At this early stage, the child can absorb that essence and not perish. The Archdemon is still destroyed with no Grey Warden dying in the process. 
Not at all. It will become something different. A child born with the soul of an old god. After this is done, you allow me to walk away. And you do not follow. Ever. The child will be mine to raise as I wish. This is what my mother intended when she sent me with you. She was the one who first gave me this ritual and told me of what I was meant to do. This does not surprise you, does it? Did you not wonder why Flemeth saved your life? Why she aided you? This is why. What is important is that I am offering this to you now. It will work, and it will save your life. If you care for him as you seem to, you will convince him to. Consider what the alternative might be. Do you think Alistair will fail to do his duty as the future king and save his country? And if you take the blow instead, he loses the woman he loves. How do you think he would feel about that? I think you have many good reasons to tell him to save his own life. I think you should consider them carefully. As you wish. Ignoring that after but one night it could barely be called a child, no, it will not be hurt. It will be changed. I do not wish to tell you. Allow me to say that what I seek is the essence of the old god that once was, and not the dark forces that corrupted it. Some things are worth preserving in this world. Make of that what you will. I have no doubt he may, but he will not. It is all I ask for in return. Then you have decided? Even if I thought Riordan could be convinced, he is unsuitable. I need one who has not been tainted for long. It must be him, and it must be tonight. A wise decision. I shall wait here then while you go and speak with Alistair. I urge you to be convincing. I see you can't sleep either. I also saw Morrigan outside your room earlier, and the look she gave me. Ooh, that was icy even for her. Is something up? Not really. All these men look at me, and, and I see it in their eyes. There's so many who are still going to die unless we do something. Suddenly it feels so real. But now you're changing the subject. This isn't about me. This is about Morrigan. I'm tired, but I'm not stupid. What did she want? Oh. I guess whatever Morrigan had to say, it's big. So what is it then? Rats running amok? Cheese supplies run low? I can take it. I do, and I feel the same. But... Why tell me now? Why so ominous all of a sudden? You mean with the Archdemon, right? If you mean running away, I can't do that. But you don't mean that, do you? What is this about? <laughs> Cute. This is payback, right, for all the jokes? But you're not joking. You're actually serious? Wow. Be killed by the Archdemon or sleep with Morrigan. How does someone make that kind of choice? You're not actually asking me this, are you? What kind of ritual is this, anyway? What? I... I must be hearing things, but are you telling me to impregnate Morrigan in some kind of magical sex, right? This... this child... Why would Morrigan want such a thing? Does she want an heir to the throne? Oh, well, that's so much better, don't you think? Here I was, worried about creating another bastard heir, and I didn't even consider that it might also be some... Dragon... God! Whatever! Look, even if I was willing to entertain this idea, and I'm not saying I am, is this really what you want me to do? Are you sure? Trust you, I... 
Very well. I do trust you. Oh, where is she? Let's go and get this over with before I change my mind. Twould seem your talk is done. Great. This isn't a dream after all. What is it to be, then? Has a decision been reached? W wait I, I want to ask about this child, the one you want. Interesting. Honesty wouldn't have been my first choice. I just want to be sure that you're not going to use this against Ferelden. That this bastard child of mine isn't going to show up some year. Of that, you have my word. <sighs> oh, why don't I feel any better about this? All right, let's just get this over with. Let us go somewhere more private, Alistair, and believe me when I say you will not hate this quite so much as you believe. So, this could be it. Soon this will be finished. One way or another. You put more faith in Morrigan than I would in your shoes. Just remember that her ritual doesn't protect us from getting squished by the Archdemon. So let's kick its ass. So, we made it. I'm impressed, aren't you? I was so scared that I might lose you. But here you are. And here I am. Not bad, right? I guess Morrigan was telling the truth after all. About the ritual. The rest of the Grey Wardens haven't arrived yet for more lay. But they've already sent questions. What should I tell them? Yes, all you need is a Maleficar willing to have your demon baby. Who knew? No, I suppose I'll just keep that to myself. I can shrug and look stupid. It's a talent. Speaking of Morrigan, do you know where she went? I'm told she vanished right after the battle. No goodbyes or anything. I'm just concerned about what that ritual is going to cost eventually, at any rate. I can't wait to be alone with you. These formal affairs drive me insane. Oh, I'll be waiting. Don't you worry. I'll let you get to your adoring public. They want to see the hero of Ferelden, and who am I to keep them waiting? <laughs>